All right, so a moment ago we were looking at looking up our backlinks in Google and Bing and then what to do with them. Tweet them, Facebook them, etc. if they're positive or uh, dis disavow them if they're negative. So we then want to talk about then building those backlinks because we do not have any say on where those links are coming from and we shouldn't have any say. We don't want to create 10 websites and link, link them together to increase traffic. That is a link building scheme that the search engines frown upon and therefore will penalize you if you engage in it. So I'm going to pull up here the, the book that I recommend and skim through a couple of excerpts specifically about enticing backlinks, getting backlinks. So you can see in general the, the chapters of the book here, but I'm going to jump over to the section. Uh, let's see, section about, here we go, backlinks, the best backlinks. The very best backlinks. Um, that you can get to your site are the ones that you do not create. These are backlinks from other sites where you did not request the link, nor did you have any say in the anchor text that is used in the link. These types of backlinks are the holy grail of backlinks. They are also the most difficult to get. How are you going to get a link to your site if you can't ask for it, you might ask yourself. So we'll have some strategies here in a moment. But the, in the old days, we would have a website where one of the pages was, was dedicated to links. It, it was the link ring or the link exchange. It was a page that was just about links. And in the old days when, the, when Yahoo was the search engine that ruled, well, that was useful because then Yahoo or the other search engines could tell you know, the value of a website from the links. And therefore, you would connect with as many, you would do link sharing, and you would try to connect with as many websites as you could and um, ask them, can you link to my website? I'll link to yours, and you would. And then so now your, you know, your um, your realty website would be linked over to a dog walking website. Well, that doesn't really relate together. So then the search engine said that doesn't that doesn't work. So here we have a few strategies. We want to entice people to link to our website because of quality content. The best way of getting this type of link is to develop content that your visitors love and want to share. Develop content on your site that other site owners will want to link to. So if it's just a website about yourself, navel gazing and such, you're a realtor and maybe you're showing off which properties you've sold and such, great, but that's limited appeal to people. What if you're a realtor and instead you're providing information, free information to potential customers that then decide to hire you? What if they see something like an infographic on your site? An infographic are graphical representations of complex topics. They are very popular items to share on social media. They are also often reposted on other sites. So it's better to show you what, a, what an infographic is than explain it. You've probably seen these already. Maybe you didn't have a name for it. You can see this. Let's go to Pinterest.com slash Mosher13. This is one of my colleagues, former student, and also works with my company once in a while. He's got Pinterest. He's a superstar on Pinterest, actually. And he shares a lot of great content. He's got a pin board here all about infographics. So it's better to show you examples than try to explain. Let's check this out. Pinterest.com slash Mosher13. And so what I'm saying is he, he does well on Pinterest. Um, he's got nearly 5,400 pins, and he's got 35,000 followers. So he's got a lot of people paying attention to him on Pinterest. Imagine if this were your own company. The point of any social network to get followers and likes and all of that, the point of any of that, not just to boost your ego, but that's a that's a captive audience. When he pins something, potentially 35,000 people see it. Yes, some amount will ignore it, but some amount will follow through. If he posts something, if he pins something meaningful and useful, 
maybe an infographic back to his own website, some amount of people are going to follow that pin back to his website. And some amount of those people that went there perhaps eventually hire him or do some other conversion that he wants on the website. So in short, any social media is in service to get you more traffic, to get you more eyeballs, to get you a captive audience. But one of the ways he's doing this is on Pinterest to have a variety of pin boards with a variety of topics and to use it all the time and pin to it and just provide a lot of great content. Now Pinterest is going to keep bothering me to sign in so it's going to be a little cumbersome here, but he's got a pin board on infographics. If you click on that, you will see these examples of um, infographics, which are basically graphical representation of topics that could be pretty boring, um, but then they're presented in an interesting graphic with colors and design. So I'm just going to pick one here. And so this one right here, um, email marketing, all the cool kids are doing it. What's the point? Aims and objectives of email marketing. So build brand awareness, increase sales, lead generation. So this could easily be a very boring black and white page or a boring PowerPoint. But here with a little bit of effort and a graphics and, and design and such, here it's showing average percentage rates. 2% uh, unsubscribe right away, 4 have a hard bounce that it never, the email never gets there, 5 have a soft bounce, 24 open it, 84 at least are deliverable. So here again, that could have been a very boring chart, but it, it stands out here. It's been designed pretty well. And furthermore, best practices, the do's and don'ts of email marketing include one call to action no larger than 600 pixel width, words not to include, confirm, join, speaker, press, instead you want to use apply, connect, conference. So okay, that's pretty useful. I think other people that I know might be interested in it. Let me share it on Twitter. Let me share it on LinkedIn. <coughs> Let me spread this infographic. That's what the author of the book is saying. Create content that you would care about Yes, but that your potential followers, customers, would also care about and share. They're being your free cheerleaders. They're being your free marketers and advertisers. Your own message is being spread out to other people, your followers. Yes? I understand the concept, but in that specific example, wouldn't pe people share the image and not a link to your website with the images? Like in this case, the images in Pinterest, so this is not carrying a link to our website. The great thing about Pinterest is that it automatically has uh, link attribution. This graphic came from some website, visually. So Pinterest automatically has a link back to where it came from. So if I first share this from my website, Pinterest will automatically add the link back to my website. So yes, people will be sharing the graphic itself, but it's gonna, but my link to my website is gonna tag along. And some amount of people are going to then follow that link, traffic back to my website. Other networks don't have that built in. Twitter perhaps doesn't have the link automatically back to the to the source. You could just have the graphic. Well, I'm gonna design my graphic that somewhere I also mention my company, I have my address, and maybe it's not an active link, but if I've got victorswebdesign.com in the corner, some people will actually follow the link by typing it themselves. It's not flawless, but the, the other point of social media is to, to build this presence and this awareness and this authority. The more you tweet, the more you use Facebook, Pinterest, etc., the more you become famous and get traffic and all of that. So if you only tweet once a month, that's not as effective as once a week, once a day, uh, if you don't have Pinterest, and especially if you're looking for a certain demographic, 
at the moment Pinterest has a very female friendly demographic so if your product is female friendly you should be on Pinterest if you're looking for a more tech oriented audience perhaps Google Plus is a good one there's it's, it's a very techy community there so if you're on the right social network building an audience sharing infographics and other content that could then help you get more traffic yes Okay, that's uh, great. But for example, you have a very basic uh, uh, website uh, mm -hmm. and for your business. Mm -hmm. So there is no um, really need to put a link to somebody else uh, website a link from your website. You mean it's better to go into your social media? So you're saying like from your website, you're asking if it's okay or not to link to someone else's website? Well, part of the... Um, this will be touched on later in the book. One of the tactics of why you would want from your website to link to another website is because that other website will get a notification. That webmaster will get a notification. There is a new link to your website from x.com. So that other webmaster then might follow that link and say, oh, okay, this website is related, relevant, important, let me link back to them. So in a sense, you're fishing, and not in a negative way, you're fishing, you're casting lures trying to catch fish. So if you, from your website you're linking to other websites, you're, you're casting the lure, you're going to catch some fish. Some websites are going to link back to you, some are not. You're going to swim away. So if you do link from your website to other websites, you could get links back. So what about if there's a website that uh, advertises, and you pay to advertise your business in there? And that has... And does that count, uh, count as a link or not? That has okay. some importance if you are on a paid website, but if, I'm a, if you pay to get there, I can pay there, and so can your competitor, and it sort of then dilutes it. It's better, like we saw that ap this apartment website right here, this is not paid. Someone wrote this article because they believed in that these three restaurants are the best ones for their residents. Um, if it was a paid website, it would get some traffic, but then anyone could then pay and get on it. So it has value to get on paid websites, but it has more value to get organic links. So like here, putting in something useful. You probably all want to know this. Seven steps to calculating your return on investment of social media. You notice this has the link back to their website. Really bad link, but it's a link. And it's bad because this is actually a link that has, uh, that capitalization is important, and you might not know that. So if you're trying to access this link and you type it yourself with lower cases, it won't work. You have to make sure you're typing with capital letters and everything. So here are seven more tips that you might find interesting in a nice infographic. And yes, the infographic takes the time and the effort to design well. And not all of us are designers. So the infographic might not be the best tactic for me to go for. It takes that effort to design. But you can look up infographic templates. Picto Chart Infographics Gallery, How to Create an Infographic in Under an Hour, 10 Free Infographic Templates, on and on and on, 2,600 Infographic Templates. So, I just check to see if I have infographics on my site, and I don't. Yeah, they're not automatic. You would... I was just checking on their, their company, mm -hmm. Agility, and it says infographics, but I did a few program, part of Agility, and it's cropped off, it says missing. That's something that you should that, that you should resolve because infographics are a, vi a viable thing to help you get traffic. Yes. So you can have a page in your website with some infographics so people can link Yes, but I wouldn't make a I wouldn't make a page on your site called infographics. Mm -hmm. I would have a blog. I would have a blog and once a month or so put out some content like an infographic.
So here it talks about uh, infographics are one way to get link, backlinks, traffic, okay? Another one, scripts and tools. I'm going to skip this one because really this is not as relevant as you would think. This one's really telling you, well, if you have some sort of tool that people can use, like banks oftentimes have a mortgage rate calculator. Or here this nutritional website has this calculator that tells you the calories from peanut butter. Well, that's very specialized. What little free mini app can you provide on your site to your users? And this is much more complicated to set up, so I'm going to skip this one in detail. Forums, that's a useful one, which are places where people can come to interact with other people in your niche. For example, if you had a website on husky dogs, then a forum would attract husky dog owners, who would then recommend your site to their friends through social media, etc. Now the pros and cons of that, the big pro is that you've got traffic to your forum, people are interacting and chatting and going back and forth, it's great. The downside of that is that anyone perhaps could write anything they want. Well maybe then you set it up that people have to register. Okay, people register, someone's angry enough to, to flame someone, so they're going to register and then they're going to start trouble. Well then you have to go in and moderate and delete the bad comments and the spam and all of that. That's the pros and the cons, the double-edged sword of the forum, in that if you don't want it to descend into chaos, you need to have some sort of spam filtering system, or you have to have a human moderator that goes in and deletes the good stuff or the bad stuff. And that, I'm already running the company, and I've got to deal with these trolls. So that could help your, your links and your SEO. I'm not saying do all of these seven things that it'll tell us. The more of them that you do, the better and some might be more effective than others depending on your website and your product and such. But this is a good one, although I am seeing and I personally feel we're moving away from this one and substituting it with social media. Facebook and Twitter <coughs> and all of that stuff. Number four is a good one also, free downloads like software or PDFs. If you can give these away and people really do find them useful, your URL will be shared with their friends on forums or social media. So for example, on my company's blog, pmdinteractive.com slash blog, you scroll down a little bit and there's a free PDF download on choosing a good password. Password online security is important and therefore your password is important that it's it's secure. If you're using the same password on your email, as your bank, as your online classes, and now you've got one of those things hacked, well now that password is accessible for all your accounts. So this free PDF download scares you about that, but then teaches you how to set up good passwords. So here in the blog, if you scroll down, here it is. A guide to using a good password. There's a PDF file. There's a little explanation, and then a, a PDF download right here, which then you can share on Pinterest or, or whatever. See, it's been shared on social media. The secret here is this was made in PowerPoint. This is a PowerPoint template that's built in. We provide our own graphics and links and text and such. That's original, but this is a template made from PowerPoint, output into a PDF, and then if someone likes it, they can easily then share it. And this has got links back to the website. It's got branding of the website. It's content that would be important for people, so therefore it's shareable. Yes. So earlier you mentioned about Pinterest. So that option on your website where you can pin it from within your website, that's what gives it the attribution mm. to the website? Yeah, so if you've got a pin it button on your website, that's one of the fastest ways for it to have your link back to your website on Pinterest. You saw that when I tweeted over here from this website, it did have the link built in. So sometimes that will happen, the link attribution, sometimes it won't. And you have to take the effort to make sure that your tweet or your pin or your Facebook post has some link back to your website.
but the book here says free stuff. Maybe something as simple as free wallpaper. Maybe you are a realtor and you have a section on your site in the blog or something that has beautiful photos of the properties you've sold. If these look nice on a person's computer and there's a button that says free download, they'll download it, but even better, your logo's in the corner. So they'll be staring at your logo in the corner of that beautiful photo all day long. And maybe next time someone says, hey, I'm looking for a house. Do you know any, realtor? any realtors? Wait a minute, I do. I'm looking at this house all day long of a, of a website, I mean, of a, of a realtor that seems to be good realtor. So that free stuff comes with, you know, the branding and the mind share of your company. Blog posts that include lists are the types of posts people love to share on other websites like forums and comments and blogs and social media. For example, top 10 WordPress plugins on a site about building websites would be very interesting to people interested in building WordPress sites. A post like this would get a lot of social shares, plus other sites will link to it. A tip here is to contact the authors of the plugins that you recommend and tell them that they made your top 10 list. Many will link to your post from their site to prove to their visitors how useful their plugin is. So that's pretty deep right there, pretty dense. You're going to write a blog post about something like a top 10 list, a top 3 list, a top 12 list, the number doesn't matter, a list. And in that list you're going to link to someone else's website that is relevant. You're going to let that other website know, either on their comments or on Twitter or whatever, you're going to let that other website know that their website has been linked. They're going to then take it, oh great, my website was worthy enough, useful enough. Then you might get a link back to your website. You might get a shout out on Twitter. You might get a, a Facebook link. So that's the social in social media. It's not a dead end. It's not your stuff on your website. SEO. It's also the SEM. What are you doing outside of your website? And I can show you here on our site, on our blog, for example, so we've got some stuff about blogging. Um, this, this post over here has some shares on social media, but then it also has uh, a comment over here from Cheryl Jones, uh, and then a link from another site and another blog post and such. So someone then linked to this blog post and her name is an active link back to her site. So she's getting some traffic from our site. That's perfectly fine for us to do. If I'm doing a blog post on WordPress plugins, I'm going to do a little research. Who else has written about WordPress plugins? I'm going to find a someone else's site and comment on their blog post. You often have the ability when you comment to add your address. Take advantage of that. Then your name will be an active link. So see that's going back to CherylBlogs.com. And some traffic is going to her site. And if I do this on someone else's site, some traffic will come back to my site from their site. Yes. When you have a, a blog page, do you need to have the comments on the part as well? That's well, that's very similar to the thing about the forums. Mm -hmm. You can have your comments turned on and let anyone comment, and then of course then the spam bots will find that and start to comment. So similar to the forums, but I think easier is to have the ability to moderate your comments. In WordPress, you can easily turn on or off the option for people to comment. So if you can turn it on, I would turn it on. And then WordPress also make, gives you the ability to not show any comments until you approve them. So I get an email here that says new comment on a blog post. And directly from the email, I can click approve, deny, spam. So if it's spam, I can click spam on the email and it never shows up. If it's a good legitimate comment, I can click approve and it shows up. If it's a legitimate poster, but then for some reason they were really mean, I can click deny, not spam, just don't show it. And that's fine. And this, is not, this is not a question about impinging on someone's free speech and all of that. Why didn't you let my comment through? 
I don't have to. It's my property. I can put what I want on my property. Just like if someone is yelling at you on your front porch, you can say, get off my property. They can back up to the public sidewalk, and then the police will show up, but they can't be yelling at you on your own private property. Tell them to get off your private property. My blog here is my private property. If I don't want certain comments on it, they don't show up. It's my property. Make your own blog and write what you want. So I would say use comments in your blog, but do make sure you activate the option to moderate the comments so that no crazy thing shows up without your approval. I'm just looking for examples here. Uh, right here. No, these aren't. These are just news items. But uh, if you had, um, you can find many examples of them. But uh, you have a blog post or websites comments. And if you have the ability to, um, I remember this one. Uh, Reinhard, Reinhard Baker. Uh, so this is a uh, website about uh, baking, and you know I look at garlic, herb, Parmesan roasted red potatoes, and then at the bottom there's a there's the ability to to comment. So this has got lots of shares on social media. And then we've got 10 responses. So then there's the ability right down here. Name, mail, comment. Name required. Mail comment will not be published. Website optional. And then your comment. I would always take the website address as required. Because if you put your website address there, your name will have an active link back to your website. That's a backlink. And then people could follow that back to your website, giving you traffic. When you comment, put your website address if it lets you put the address. Why doesn't the mail is required? Is that something it's required because, um, again, for legitimacy, if um, if anyone could comment, things would be a little more chaotic because then the spam bots would uh, would would take over. So this is one of the steps to try to prevent some spam because built in there's probably a system that says oh this is coming from xyz.net literally and so then they will just go to spam because xyz.net is a spam site mm -hmm. uh, so that's one way to try to prevent spam vouching for your identity so if I had a a website about blog, uh, a blog about baking or cooking or whatever, I would want to find websites where I can comment and add a legitimate comment, like, um, you know, Robbie here said, uh, uh, I'm on this. Okay, once the temperature drops enough that it doesn't seem insane to turn the oven on, these look so good. I may even give in before then. So you try to add comments relevant to the blog post, and then simply by having a link back to your to your own website. Robbie didn't, but Sprinkles of Sweetness did. So this comment was approved. I know that they moderate comments here. This comment was approved. This is a link back to their website. I can tell because it's underlined. That's not a link. That's not a link. That's a link. So that's got a backlink back to their site. That's one way to get backlinks from other people's sites. So I'm not going to read everything about the book, but you can look here. If you do get the book, there's other ways to get backlinks, forum participation. That's kind of what I just showed you there. But again, moving a bit more away from forums to social media, commenting on blog posts in that same vein. Here's a very good one, but much more effort, of course. YouTube and other video sites. Video is becoming very, very hot for any niche. I would love to see that dog walker have a website, uh, have a channel on YouTube where they're showing off all of the cute dogs that they've walked and the care that they do it and the love that they have for those animals. So then I'll trust more to have my dog walked by them if I had a dog. So 
This takes more effort, though. Creating videos that offer valuable info in your niche is a great way to increase authority and social proof, especially if your photo or brand image appears in the video. Videos that you create do not need to be 10 or 15 minutes long. You can easily create short 2 or 3 or 1 minute long videos. Um, and we, we've, many of us have a smartphone. These things are little cameras. They don't have to be super professional. Um, you can use these to record some quick videos, put them up on your YouTube, put them on your Facebook, put them on Vine, Instagram, whatever. You've got some video content that then you can share on social media. Um, what I would say about video, that's a big topic in and, it's, in and of itself, what I would say about video is very two very important things with video. Make sure there is adequate light and adequate sound. If I'm trying to record someone and I'm standing right here and they're on that wall, that's too far. The audio is not going to pick up. They're going to be sounding like they're this and they're not going to pick up on the microphone. So then when someone plays the video, they won't hear anything. I would get a little closer like this. You know, try to fill them in the frame. The, try to have them speak loudly to hit the microphone. This is not a good spot either. Not enough light. I would have them stand below the lights or near a light source, you know, getting recorded right here is going to be much better. So good light and good sound will make a video. And it doesn't have to be on a tripod, it can be shaky, that's fine, but really it's all about the, 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 the light and the sound. And these cell phones, many of the newer ones, are recording in HD. So visual quality should be very good if you've got good lighting. And sound quality should be good if you've got close to the mic. You can of course then invest in bigger and better cameras, but it is a big investment that does pay off. Video is very popular and will continue to be. And so you're creating 30 second videos. That's something that you could do once a month. Put it out on social media, on your site, get fame, get traffic, get clients. In my social media class for the first time, I'm going to be addressing YouTube uh, on Fridays. We've got um, a social media class going on, um, part one and part two. Part two next month is the first time I'm going to be talking about YouTube. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about video production on Windows, because we've got Windows computers, you can take the class. Whatever you learn here, but you're a Mac person, you'll be able to use um, iMovie on the Mac. Different controls and such, same concepts. And I'm going to do that video class on YouTube for social media next month. And then it goes in onto social media. Use social media as well to get links back to your website. Use your Twitter, use your Facebook. As I showed earlier for the client, Remember when I when I logged in, there were two notifications. I tweeted something. Now there's four notifications. I'll check that notification in a moment. I want to keep you in suspense. But I want to then uh, further say here that use social media. That's the SEM of things. Blogs. You want content on your site, that's why people will link to your site. Therefore, you're going to blog. So I teach a class on blogging. Actually, it just ended this, this Monday, did it? Um, no, it ended last month. Things are getting jumbled up. But uh, I teach a class on blogging. A quick, a quick self-taught course on that? Oh, look at this. On our website, we've got the blog checklist part one and part two part three coming soon. So some of the things I talked about in that class are found in these three blog posts. So visit our blog, pmdinteractive.com, and don't forget to share. I just posted this yesterday, so it doesn't have much traction yet. But once we ourselves put it on, uh, on our Facebook and our Twitter and so forth, that will increase popularity breeds popularity. And so blogging is important for SEO. This is something you do on your site. You're creating content to entice people to link back to your site. 
RSS feeds I wouldn't really worry about. That's kind of an old technology. Um, you can look at it on your own. I'm going to skip that. Site directories, that has its pros and cons, but I personally think that's getting more passe. That is also like an older style of web and SEO in that you would want to get on these websites that just were directories to other websites. And in the beginning when there weren't that many websites and it was harder to find content, I would be subscribed to two or three websites about directories of content. Now I have a search engine. So I personally don't think site directories are as useful as they used to be. But you can um, still get in on a few key ones. What's a key one? You need to do research in your niche to find directories about your particular product. And then blogging is mentioned here, but this is guest blogging. Go to other people's websites related to your own content and blog for them. The reason you would do that is, I was just looking at an article earlier, I guess I closed it. Um, This is an investing website, and um, it takes submission on oh, this one. It takes submissions from a variety of, of authors, and so, for example, this one, uh, Twitter just uh, released some information. Uh, uh, investors didn't quite like the results. The stock went down. Well, what's the old mantra? Buy low, sell high. So this author is saying now is the time to buy Twitter stock. It's not as expensive as it was. It's a low point at the moment, but because of these ideas here, Twitter's going to come back up and you're going to have value with Twitter. So Alex Pitti wrote this and he wrote other articles for this website, Seeking Alpha. And so this is a guest blogger. The point of being a guest blogger is then you will have your own author page on their website where then all of your articles will be listed there at the minimum and at the maximum you will have links back to your own website. So if you're guest blogging consistently on other people's websites or on a spread of websites you will then start to build authority, you will then start to build a presence on those other websites linking you back to your website. It's got a lot of comments, um, articles, followers followers on this website but then links back to his own website his Twitter account right there and um, his YouTube channel and his LinkedIn so that's the point of guest blogging it's free advertising maybe you don't get compensated from the website you're blogging but this is close to compensation traffic back to your online presence through guest blogging. Yes? In the uh, web blogging um, area, does, can you repost a blog, for example, the one you have here for the blog checklist? Mm -hmm. If you were to post this on another blog, would this be considered guest blogging, or you have to generate a brand new blog? That, that's a very good question, and I, I don't have an exact answer, so the question is, if I've got my post on my site, can I repost it to some other site, or do I have to make a new one? That I need to educate myself a little bit more, because I've seen examples, I just saw one the other day, um, how to invest $100, $1,000, $10,000. This one appeared on, on the Mint blog, but I've seen it on like three other websites, based basically verbatim. And at the bottom it says, this blog originally appeared on the Mint blog. So it's a link back to the original blog post. I don't know myself fully the value yet of having your website repeated exactly on multiple websites, but to me, from my knowledge of other aspects of SEO, I don't think it's as useful because the search engines don't like duplicate content. So I'm surprised when sometimes I see something like that duplicated. This I've seen this exact post on other sites like this. I, I feel from my research about duplicate content that that's not a good idea. See, it's the same blog here over at Relay Rides blog. 
and it's the same one at listenmoneymatters.com. And I'm pretty sure all of these say at the very bottom, this post originally appeared on Mint. And it must get them some amount of positive SEO and traffic, but from my experience and knowledge, uh, having duplicate content is not a good thing. So basically, Google doesn't want, like if you're looking how to invest $100, Google doesn't want to show five links to the same content, correct? Yeah, but that's exactly what I saw here. I put in those keywords I know that are in this blog post and it showed up five times. Um, so I don't know exactly what to say about that, but uh, on a personal note, what I would say is I would um, use your post from your own site to guest blog to other people's sites, but change it and add something new. And, and target it maybe more for that particular audience so that it's not the exact same content because again guilty by association perhaps because mint.com is a big name in the space it doesn't penalize them but us that me that I'm just starting off with investing and I spread my same blog post to 10 sites maybe I don't get such a pass and I get penalized because my duplicate content appears too many times exactly as is so to be safe rather than sorry I would put my content to different blogs, but change it to target it to each each uh, each site. So guest blogging, finding guest blogs. It's just searching. For example, uh, investing. Right for us, investing. Um, and therefore, <coughs> results will appear on people's websites that they're looking for people to write for them for that keyword. PDF distribution and PowerPoint distribution. So again, free stuff. This relates to the free stuff. What can you put out there to, uh, to, to get more attention for your own website? So here it mentions scribd.com or scribed. Never know how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it scribd.com. Uh, this is a website where you can upload uh, PDFs and such, and it's one of the big names to share PDFs, uh, eBooks and such to a degree. Um, to uh, I personally have not used it. I know it's been around a while. I've played with it here and there. You know, I think I have used it, but not enough really to say anything that useful about it. But I do know uh, from its reputation and such and content that it is a good website to share your content it's like the you know if YouTube is the site for video Scribd is the site for text texts uh, in that vein another one that I recommend is called slideshare.com that's the that's the YouTube of PowerPoint slideshare.net you've got uh, some good ideas that you can put in a 3 to 5 to 10 slide PowerPoint make it put it up on SlideShare, uh, get some traffic from there, back to your website. Is there usually a cost to do that? It depends on the site. For SlideShare, um, I, don't, I don't believe so. Uh, many times these sites have a free version and a paid version. And the free version works great for 98% of us. The paid version has extra stuff, like LinkedIn. There's the free LinkedIn that gives you lots of great features. But if you want the feature to email certain people you gotta get the pro version so off the top of my head I don't remember the differences if there are about slideshare if there's a paid or not but it's free to research for example Guy Kawasaki he's a big name in the world of, of tech and startups and such he's got right here a, uh, a PDF on starting a startup why you need to weave a mat which I'm sure is some sort of acronym that will help you in your startup. Money and time tomorrow. That's what I'm going to guess. What's well, new in Windows 10? So that's that, that would be useful. Windows 10 just came out today. If you didn't know, the newest version of Windows is out today. What's new? There's a PDF all about it. Something free, which gets traffic back to lynda.com. Their address is built into the PDF.
Um, one more quick thing again. I'm not going to read you the whole book. Uh, a lot of the things I'm talking about in the class are synthesized from the book, but when I said about hyping your links, uh, here they're calling it backlinks to backlinks. So basically you find these quality links that are going to your page, you link to those quality links. You put it on Twitter, you put it on your blog post or whatever. Which then goes on to say, well, what about bad links? What do you do with bad links? Well, bad links are bringing down your site. So then it talks about disavowing, which we already did. So I'm going to end there talking about excerpts from the book. Again, it's about $3, $4, the digital book. You can get the printed book. Actually, I believe the first book and the second book are sold in one bundle for like $8 if you want a printed book. I like the digital books because you can access them on any device. You don't need a Kindle reader to read Kindle books. You just need a smartphone, the app, or your web browser. I've got them loaded up here on my web browser. So any questions on the book or any topics we've talked about so far? Um, let's take one more break and then when we come back we'll uh, further talk about uh, SEO and this time we'll switch gears to do a little bit more on-page SEO stuff on the website. So we'll be back in 10 minutes at 8 o'clock. <laughs>